and welcome to another episode of Ghost in the Magazine. I'm Gabe. I'm Steph. I'm Jay. And this week we are covering it, the 2017 remake. They 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 changed some things in this one compared to the miniseries, but it stayed close to its roots and it kept pretty much the um the foundation was the same. The big difference is the adult and the childhood stories are yes. completely separate. The remake. It's separate. Yeah. And that's the mini series is together. Yeah, that's an important distinction because the book is the same as the mini series in that aspect. Yes. And then also the setting is in the 80s rather than the 50s. Kind of, I think they yeah. changed it to the 80s. I think it was a good idea because I love the 80s, but also I think it's because Stranger Things was real popular at mm-hmm. that time and they have they casted stranger things kid what's his name finn, finn wolfhard. wolfhard that one so anyway so the movie starts off with you know georgie he's wanting to go outside and you know make his little paper boat and bill's helping him and bill's like you know he's sick and he's like you know i can't go but like here i'll help you and then he they make the boat he puts like the glue over it and it's then, um it's paraffin wax so that the the, the paper doesn't like dissolve in the water well he names that he names the the boat ss georgie you call the boat she yeah he tells him like you always name a boat she so you know georgie's excited he's like woohoo i got a boat so he gets his jacket <laughs> on he runs outside you know he places the he places the boat on the on like the stream that's along the like the curb or the sidewalk yeah it's basically flooded i'm pretty sure there was a hurricane coming or it had just ended no, yeah, that's so that's just the weather in Derry. Right. So Bill, you know, Bill waves him off. You know, he's watching from his window and Georgie waves back and he's like, all right, cool, I'm out. So he's chasing his he's chasing his boat and then he he smacks into a roadblock sign, like the, the roadblock thing that they usually put. He gets and, RKO'd. Yeah, oh, literally. Poor baby. And he sees the and then he gets up and he sees the boat like going through the sewer and he's like, no. <laughs> But yeah, he screams, and then that was a good like, reenactment. Sorry, I can't. <laughs> he said no. <laughs> so the boat Your goes into the sewer. The, same. <laughs> the boat, the boat goes into the sewer, and he's like, "Oh, like oh no, Bill's gonna kill me." Which I don't understand, like why he was like thinking that. Because like, he's a little boy, and his big brother probably threatens him a lot, even though it's not real. He's not actually going to murder him. He probably put the put the fear of Jeebus into him. I like guess, you better uh, not wreck this boat that I worked so hard on. It's just little. It's just little boy stuff. So uh, you know, then we got Pennywise shows up, very similar to the you know the original. He greets Georgie, and he's talking all nice and stuff. The only difference, though, so the difference between this one and like the original, right? Is that Pennywise is a little more cheerful in this one? Mm. Like he's a little more like Tim Curry was all like, "Hello, Georgie," you know, like a deep voice and all that. And Bill Skarsgård is all like, "Hi, Georgie," you know, which like, I think is scarier because no, it is scary. It is really, scary. Um, really putting on a show to like lure a child, which is like his whole right. bag. Georgie's a little like standoffish at first, but he's like he convinces him, and he's like, you know, like come on, like I'm harmless. He chomps his freaking arm off. Yep. And and I, okay, that sounds bad, but I really like that scene because of how wide his mouth opens and so many teeth. Like, it's just so, like, abnormal. It's like, it, I don't know. It's, besides the fact that there's a fucking um, clown in the sewer, it just really shows how not part of that world he was. He's more of an animal than yes. Tim Curry's Pennywise was. Yeah, and yes. to be fair, this movie had a bigger budget than the miniseries, and also, you know, like technology. Well, so, that sets uh, the tone of the that sets the tone of the movie because then you know for the rest, it's like the end of summer, and the kids should be having fun, like doing fun kid things. But at the back of everyone's mind, Georgie's missing. And it's yeah. more than just Georgie that's gone missing. Oh yeah, Betty rips them. Some other kids. Yeah, end of summer. We meet everyone, so everyone is pretty much friends already. Besides Mike Hanlon, Ben, and, and, and Ben from Social. 
Yeah, and exactly. Beverly Marsh. And Beverly Marsh. Bill, Richie, Eddie, and Stanley, they're man. all friends. Stan the man. So they're all friends. And uh, then we meet Henry Bowers, which he's a freaking psychopath. He's literally the worst. Like, he, it gives me heartburn thinking about Henry Bowers. Why, why are bullies in Stephen King movies and books such cunts for no reason whatsoever? Because apparently that's how the 50s were. And that's like, that's the time where he grew up. So he really, like, that's his roadmap. That's why he has such racist characters. Because apparently in New England in the 50s, everybody was racist and terrible and there was not shit to do except read and act up i did get like the racist undertones from not really undertones from henry whenever he they're not undertones him. they're very blatant and i'm yeah. not gonna talk too much about it at this moment so the whole thing is is that bill obviously believes that georgie's alive mm-hmm. and he believes that like his body is um got washed out to the barons exactly so they have like he was like making this model he has like blueprints and stuff like he's obviously put a lot of thought into this ben runs into the group while he's running away from henry which henry carves in his name into his chest for really no reason but ben kicks off of him and that's what kind of sets henry off and like i'm gonna kill this guy so he runs into them at the Barrens. Boom. They they kind of bonded from there on. They're like, oh, yeah, you know, this is what happened to me. They take care of him. They bandage him up, and they're friends. And they run into Beverly at the pharmacy store, too. And that's, like, the first time that they're all together. They also run into Mike, right? From this point on, each one of them starts to see Pennywise in, in a different form. So, like, Mike sees him when he's at the butcher shop like he's delivering right he sees pennywise like hanging from the cha- from the from the hooks like the meat hooks and then next thing you know he has like a like a severed hand and he's like waving at mike and then in the bushes yeah whenever he gets cornered by henry i yeah. hate that scene it's gross stan sees him um you know he's at the at the synagogue stan is chased by this painting of this like this woman but she's like kind of like disfigured kind of yeah she's almost like a picasso come to life where her 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 shit's crooked like her features are lopsided like abstract you know what it reminded me of and we'll probably get back to it at some point but the nun from the Conjuring ah, series. i had a feeling you were gonna say that like what what's wrong with stan's yeah, stan they're... why is he into weird art so that's when stan sees him ben runs into him at the at the library because ben's like you know, he's into history and stuff and he's like looking up history of the town and he starts to notice things you know that stand out a little bit and then yeah pennywise shows up there it was like eggs right that's what it was it was the eggs that he that were yeah, the easter eggs right? right yeah because he was reading the story about what happened on easter when pennywise shows up he's like uh he's like a head he's supposed to be like a headless boy and like he's running after him but the way he's moving is like abnormal like it's almost like he's broken like classic um scary movie shit where like the glitchy walking mm-hmm. right like, yeah, yeah 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 that's actually a really good way to put it he's like a marionette without strings just sort of and without a head it well that goes with that so. we learned that bev you know her father's abusive just like in the original uh but he's way worse in this one like he, he's obviously in this one a lot more but like Dude, can he's I? A lot... He's so creepy. Can I go off about this for a second? Mm-hmm. Because yep, absolutely, nothing, nothing in this film, gore-wise or like monster-wise, threw me so much and got such a reaction out of me. Then the whole thing with her dad, mm-hmm. like I literally text Ali while I was watching this, saying, "I want to string this man up by his testes outside of his body." Somebody it was just. It was just pure rage against this guy. Yeah, the just the whole vibe, like the unspoken things between them was so highly uncomfortable. I was expecting to see something similar in the in the original, but they don't make it that obvious. It's especially like the whole thing that she's being bullied for 
Yes. Is that she She's is quote, un, quote unquote a slut. It's the worst thing to be bullied for if you are a sexual assault survivor. Right. So, you know, because of all this, and she's also gone through a lot, she is like, you know what? I'm going to cut my hair because she doesn't want to have the appearance of a, like a girl anymore. So, I think she yes. cut her hair for a lot of traumatic reasons. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that's where we're left with her. Now, Eddie runs into Pennywise next. <laughs> and he's running, he's, you know, he's walking home and he passes the, the house on Neobold Street. And then we see the freaking disgusting leopard. <laughs> he's so yicky. Like, that's yeah. really the only way I can describe it. Right. And Eddie's so, character, he's like a germaphobe and he's like super like, eh, you know, gotta wash our hands. And Ali, Ali looked this up. All of the leper's face, except for one eye, is all practical effect work. That's amazing to me. That's impressive. Um, so yeah, he's he's chased by the leper, but he you know he escapes and he sees Pennywise and he has like the balloons, um, and he's just giving Eddie this creepy smile, you know, and then he runs away. Back to Bev and she's in her room and she has that uh, this postcard that obviously Ben wrote for her, but she doesn't know who it's from, and um, she starts to hear like 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 things like giggling. Like she mm-hmm. has children. And they call her name from the sink drain. Mm-hmm. Right. So she goes into the bathroom and she's like, look, you know, she's looking into the drain and she can hear them, you know, getting louder and louder. And then the freaking hair comes out and wraps around her head and is like pulling her closer to the drain. And then all this blood just comes gushing out. Pause. Um, just the blood coming out of the sink. Like, especially because her mouth was open um, and it like shoots up into her face reminded me of two things. Um, So one, uh, (laughs) the scene in the Evil Dead remake where the possessed girl like vomits blood all over her friend's face. And then also in Nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah, the blood shoots out of the bed and spreads across the ceiling and then it gets sucked back in. Yes, and they filmed that because those were all practical effects in a revolving room where everything was glued down. Oh, huh. isn't that cool? Yeah. So that's this is what I thought, and I was wondering how they they um, shot this scene. Uh, so yeah, so there's blood everywhere in the bathroom at this point, and she's screaming. Right. So her father comes in the bathroom, and he's like, "What's wrong with you?" And she's like, well, "Like you don't see it." You know, see the blood, and it's, what are you talking about? And then he makes a comment like he um, says all the time, "You worry me, Bevy." He says it a lot. He says, "You worry me a lot." And I don't like it. I don't like it at all. Mm-mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-mm. Is that was that her dad, or was that yeah. Pennywise masquerading as her Ooh, dad? I feel like you never really know because mm. they are the same level of ick. I think it's actually her dad at this point. Because, you know, he, he doesn't see the blood or whatever. So that's how you kind of get the, the idea. But Pennywise plays with people's emotions. It would be very mm-hmm. like him to pretend not to see the blood to make her think she's crazy. And also, like, it's a great metaphor for how her there dad is. is an absolute cunt. Oh. Well, that, yes, but how her dad is an absolute cunt bag and that's is how- refusing to see the, or doesn't care about the damage that he's doing to this little girl's head no he doesn't care because he's an ill man there's no there's illness and then there's needs to be put down disgusting like an an animal (laughs) don't be quoting Rorschach here anyway um, (laughs) uh, so yeah so at this point assuming that it's actually her dad right you notice that adults are like oblivious or for the most part at least like Pennywise can, can kind of control who sees what pretty much may I say that is a common theme in horror movies where children are involved parents being unwilling to consider the possibility of the paranormal and they would mm-hmm. rather just condemn their child as crazy than saying hmm, maybe there is a murderous clown thing eating mm-hmm. children Mm -hmm. there is we were talking about this 
yesterday when we were recording Time and Siege, there's a level of willfulness here from all of the adults to pretend to yeah. look the other way. That yeah. rather than deal with the reality, and a part of that comes, I think, through the socioeconomic class that they're part of. Oh, absolutely. I was just going to say, but also it's like the history of dairy. The miniseries and the movies don't get as deep into the history as the book. And I'm not going to talk about it as much. But there is a long, long history of this kind of thing in dairy. And it started with um, the story that Ben told the kids in his room about the 91 people who went missing, the first settlers in dairy. Mm -hmm. And it's just part of that town's history. If you stay there and you become an adult, that's what you're destined to do. It is very... It's a a very supernatural place. Oh, yeah. And it's because of Pennywise. It's a great metaphor for working class, small town America. Like people can't escape. Yes, it is. Because it's just a matter of surviving day to day rather than and distracting yourself from what is really going on Mm -hmm. rather than trying to fix the problems at the root. Hot down. Also, I love the little turtle cameos throughout this. Yes, I they're important. The, I only noticed the one with the Lego. The Lego and the, the Lego. The what about the one in the water when they jumped in? Yeah, when they dived in the lake, there was it's like, oh, there's something at my foot. It's a turtle. Oh, it's a turtle. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I would have thought turtle boy. You would have noticed the whole turtle. Something that I was. I did find a little bit strange about Pennywise's hunting habits. Okay. Is that uh, historically there's these big events that happen where he sort of takes a load of victims at once rather than pick them off one at a time, like he does with the Loser Club. Mm -hmm. Like the Ironworks incident, right? Yes. But then he also does the same thing with the kids in Derry at the moment. He doesn't farm the fear from Betty or the bully that goes into the storm drain. He just kills them. Or Georgie, even. He just kills them outright. Uh, but he did... Um, it wasn't like an immediate thing. You know, with Patrick Hopstetter, he played with him a little bit. You know, like with the zombies, and he chased him down the drain. He could have just eaten him. Um, mm-hmm. And then we don't know what happened with Betty, because we didn't see it. I don't remember. So I think maybe it just depends on it's mood mm, he's How hungry he is. he's a fickle it little is. bitch <laughs> ain't he though <laughs> okay continue your story <laughs> so beverly that so that's her encounter with pennywise and then last but not least we have bill's encounter he he's in the house and he thinks he sees like georgie running around so he runs toward the basement bill slowly goes goes down there and the basement's kind of like flood. No, it's not flooded, but it, I mean, no, it is flooded, but it's not like crazy deep. It's like what, like it's flooded, um, but it's not flooded. It's not like you know, it's what it's. It's enough to say it's flooded. But, but anyway, it's, it's so a pond. <laughs> it's not a leak. So yeah, there you go. Thanks, uh, thanks, Jay. <laughs> so it's Georgie, and you know, he starts saying like, "We all float down here." you'll float too and he starts saying it over and over again and but then like as he says it like his face gets all like nasty yeah it's composed and like and then it's pennywise comes up from the water and then just like it like pauses for a second and then he like starts shaking violently while moving towards him really fast and bill just like bolts out of the basement and pennywise is behind him like he's using him as a puppet yeah, and then he likes, yeah, but then like also after he like doesn't catch him, he, he like lays his head on the on Yes, the step. it's gross. It, okay, it was like um, he was like an octopus or something. The way he, his body slapped against the bottom of the stairs and then he slithered him back into the water. Yeah, and I think like his eyes roll behind his, 
<laughs> yeah, they turn white. <laughs> Again, very similar to the miniseries. Everyone has their own special encounter with Pennywise. Um, at this point, they all talk about it. They're all aware that, okay, so it's not just me. I'm not crazy. <sighs> they decide, you know, they got to do something about it. So they have the projector scene. Oh, where they, yes. Where they figure out yes. that it is the well house. Yes, yes. They, 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 they figure out where he's from. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then they find out that the, doesn't like the well connect to the Nibble house? Mm. Yes, it's, yes. The original well house where, um, like, I think that was all that was left standing of the original settlement was in the house in New Ball Street. Right. So they're like, yo, we gotta go to this house. And then they freaking go to the house. They have a little battle. And it seems like, you know, they, they did a number on Pennywise. Like, there was some very creepy scenes there. Like, when Richie goes into the room and the door locks behind him and it's all clowns. And there's a, there's a cameo from Tim Curry's outfit. Is there? Yeah, one of the clowns is dressed <laughs> like his Pennywise. <laughs> so they they defeat Pennywise here and make it out by the skin of their teeth and for Ben, the skin of his belly. Mm-hmm. And basically decide, no, fuck that. We're not going back in. Everyone except Bev and Bill. Yeah. So a month passes. Henry kills his dad because of Pennywise. Yeah, that was fucked up. Which I love in that one scene. You finally address the fact that television, the Derry Children's are, has been subtly just Pennywise talking to people. Kill them all. Kill them all. So Bev gets taken <laughs> after Cunt Bag Dad does the thing again. And they have to go see her. So yeah, so they're going, they, you know, they get the curse to go back into the house to go save her. But Henry's also behind them because like, you know, he's like uh, brainwashed. I mean, he he's already he's a possessed. violent. Yeah, I mean, but but like, I feel like he's only partly possessed because he's already crazy. Like, well, not, it's just like an easier doorway. Like it's easy to kick the doorway down to possess him. Right. So they're all going down the well. And then as Mike is about to go down, uh, Henry comes up and they're like, you know, they're fighting and they have like a little tussle. And uh, Mike straight up murders a child. <laughs> so yeah, he throws him down the well and it's like, rip. And he like bashes his head on the side on the way down. It's very visceral. Right. So we got the face off in the, in the sewers. They spot, you know, all these different things floating. And it's like, it's some of them are like, objects like toys and stuff and it's like a mountain of trash yeah but there's also like bodies too there's like there are bodies too Mm -hmm. it's like a mix the missing children yeah yeah it's disgusting we all float down here final battle with it final final battle pennywise grabs bill and he's like you know he tells everyone like yeah you can leave if you want but i'm keeping bill like if if you let if you let me keep bill you guys can leave I i won't go after you and richie has this whole speech and it seems like he's not gonna he's not gonna help Bill, but then he decides he's gonna help Bill. Pulls and... the baseball bat off the side of the mic and goes, and now I'm gonna have to kill this fucking clown. <laughs> yes, which I love that scene. Um and yeah, they all start fighting him. And what's cool is like as they're fighting him, each person that he faces, he tries to become their like fear. So mm-hmm. like like a um what is the thing from Harry Potter? The Boggart. The yeah, Boggart. Like the Boggart. Yeah. They're beating the crap out of him. And he, he's tries very... to smush his heart. And Pennywise just sort of throws himself over the edge of the cistern and is hanging on by his fingers. So, yeah, they defeat it. And, uh, well, he, 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 he escapes, quote unquote. You know, he just drops off. He, he just drops off and he, he's gone. And... After he leaves, they notice all everything starts coming down. And, and there's a big hug and the Beverly. scene. And Beverly. Yes, Wait, and no, Beverly. Bev, Bev no, gets no, no, but, by the kiss. Yeah, oh, but, uh, Ben. Ben wakes her up. Yeah, so it's like cool, like we you know, we win. But after you know, after they leave and they're um they're out of the house, they all kind of recognize that like, hey, like, you know, he may not be dead. Well, I mean, I think they all know he's not dead, he's just gone. Yeah, because um, but like, they... how can you think he's dead? He lives in a well, and he went They're down children. another well. 
Right. Also children. So, you know, they're all talking and they and they make this pact of like, hey, you know, hey, if it comes back, because they, they realize the pattern early on in the movie that he comes every 27 years. Like they're, they're aware of that. So they make this pact of like, hey, in 27 years when we're adults, like if if it shows up again, we got to come back. And um, this scene, the way they cut their hands, because <laughs> they make a blood pact. So they, oh. they take a piece of glass and they break it and they're like, cutting their hands. But the way they do it, it looks so painful. Like, and it looks so real too. Like, they're, again, actually impressive. Oh. Like the way, the way they pulled that off. So yeah, they make the pact to, to come back and they cut their hands and stuff. And then um, they all they all kind of do their own thing and then when the movie ends it says it and then it says chapter one okay boom all righty so i wasn't on the uh mini series episode but um that was one of my favorites for a long long time and this movie didn't really it wasn't really scary to me but it was scarier than the original movie um and just a couple of things that i want to talk about difference wise Okay, first of all, young Tim Curry and Bill Skarsgård look eerily similar. Like, they look very much alike. Have y'all ever seen a side-by-side? Yes, I have. It's the wild. Um, yeah, and he can do some weird shit with his eyes that um, <laughs> is, like, <sighs> unsettling, to say the least. So one of the differences in face makeup, I guess you would say, like the way they looked is that while Tim Curry had a big old forehead, true. Um, New Pennywise has a really big head, like an abnormally long head. And also like people online, I fell into this rabbit hole looking up stuff about this movie. And I wish this guy goes into craziness about um the way this guy looks and so there are pictures of nephilim skulls saying that he's supposed to be like a nephilim and there's this crazy connection between them and clowns which freaked me out so i stopped reading and then the other (laughs) thing (laughs) is the um the way the red paint is on his face looks like horns so it has a direct correlation with this demon whose name i won't say but it's like oh nope, please don't i i would never you guys know how i am um but it's a bull demon that eats children is that crazy hmm. wow. it's a lot interesting. <laughs> that's interesting it's a we lot. did so steph did all that research me and gib did next to nothing final thoughts on this movie and now jay this is your first time watching any of the movies so it is. Go first. What do you think? You know what? I came out of this film with a weird feeling in my chest, and I realized why. It's because I, I never had a childhood like that. Like I never had summers riding bikes like left unsupervised. Oh. And uh, mm-hmm. it kind of felt like I don't know, like lost potential or mourning that lost potential at the same time absolute rage um over a certain character i know scare wise this is below any supernatural stuff like i'm there with steph i don't fuck with demons and stuff like Mm -hmm. that i didn't maybe it's because i was watching it in like the mid-evening with the sunlight streaming through the window i wasn't scared (laughs) I was just sort of, my stomach just sort of flipped at the whole sexual predator storyline. It didn't really scare me. All right, Steph, your thoughts? Um, I love this movie. I thought it was, um, it was pretty unsettling, especially compared to the miniseries. Like, I wasn't really ready for it when I saw it the first time, but I was ready to see it because it went through some um, weird stuff. Like, I, I, felt like at one point it wasn't going to get made because I think they switched directors I read the book after I watched this movie 
but I really like it. I like the way that Pennywise um, looks and I liked that they changed it to the eighties. I've watched it more than once and I'll definitely watch it again. <laughs> okay. So yeah, I love this movie. And again, I've seen it multiple times. Pennywise's look and the way he sounds and his little mannerisms, love them all. Uh, I don't think this movie is scary. It, it has like uh, slightly disturbing scenes, but not even to the point where it's like, I can't look. Like I, I can watch the movie and not be like, oh, I can't look, I can't look. It's so, it's unnerving. It's not like shit yeah. pants. <laughs> yeah, and it, and it tends to be funny too. Like Yeah, the kids are humorous. I thought of something else that should stay in this movie and not in the second movie because it happened to Mike Hanlon as a child. P.S. And the next episode I'm about to go off about Mike Hanlon as an adult. Um, But the encounters that they had with Pennywise, his was very interesting and I feel like they really could have included it. There was a giant bird that tried to attack him. I believe he went to the ironworks like against his parents permission just to kind of like check it out because he knew the story he was very interested in history like his dad was a collector of uh the history he had this big old book that he actually took to the kids um and sorry in the book this big bird tried to attack him and it was it was pennywise and i don't know why they changed that i just thought it would have been really cool they did Mike Dirty in this film a lot because they halfway did. through and they've still not introduced him to the main cast. There, I have a lot of feelings. He's the token black kid and I have so many feelings about it, but I am not going to digress here. I will digress save later. Yep, save it for episode two. Take them pocket. I think we all like the movie and, mm-hmm. and we'll definitely watch it again and I would also recommend it to anybody. So... But also, but I would also that that's exactly what I was going to say. But also, if you're going to watch that, I hate hearing people watch this movie and then say, "Oh, I'm not going to watch the original." I hate old horror movies. You shut up. No, it holds up. <laughs> it holds up. Like I said last episode, it actually holds up. So watch it. It really does. So that's it for this week's episode. Um, next week's episode will be it, chapter two. So it'll be the sequel to this episode's. No way. Yes. I know, right? Wow. You can follow the podcast on Twitter at, G- at GITM Podcast. You can follow me on Twitter at Gabuto. You can follow me on Twitter at Witchex Pudding. You can follow me at Atlas underscore Snow. Okay, okay bye.